From SWX Nonstop Local Sports, this is SWX Overtime, powered by Midway Montana. Welcome to SWX Overtime. I'm Spencer Martin, and what a fantastic Friday it was. Just a quick little tease for you. We had a winning streak tonight that ended, that dated back to 1996. We'll get to that a little bit later. We'll get to the double-A gridiron. But first, for the game of the week, we got to head to Lewistown to check in with the defending Class A state champions for our SWX Overtime game of the week. The Golden Eagles taking on the Laurel Locomotives and probably a top five matchup in the state this early in the year in first quarter. Dashiell Ruff finds Weiler snap for the 15-yard Fergus touchdown. Golden Eagles up 7-0. Let's go to the second quarter. Fergus inside the red zone once again, but the Locomotives pick it off. They hold the drive for the home team. Score remains 7-0 at halftime. Third quarter, Golden Eagles down on the goal line. Karen Netburn runs in for the two-yard score to go up a pair of touchdowns. And in the fourth, McKay Shoby in at quarterback now. Pitch and catch 20 yards to Jace Vance. 21-0 Golden Eagles. The Fergus defense pitches a shutout against the Locomotives and wins the Class A showdown 21-0 tonight in Lewistown. Special shout-out to the Fergus faithful and Mike Mangold for sending us those highlights from Lewistown. Let's go to the double-A gridiron now. Billings West on the road tonight in Helena looking to bounce back after losing late to Butte a week ago. Both teams Searching for their first win as West takes on the Bengals on a beautiful sunny night in Helena. And it was Helena High who would score the first touchdown with Carter Crack. Finding Sam Ark on the short pass. Get up there, fella. But Billings West had an answer. As quarterback Drew McDowell threw up an absolute prayer. But that prayer answered by Elias Bonner lunging for the spectacular catches. Bonner and on the same drive. West High, unfortunately, fumbles. The Bengals recover for a red zone stop to stay ahead. That'd be crucial later on. After a great catch from Billings West, Helena High answered with this nasty grab from Manu Mello. This guy's been making plays like this his whole career. And then in the third quarter, the Golden Bears, they did finally strike goal thanks to Reese Valdez dodging defenders left and right before finding open field. That put Billings West up 14 to 7. Looking good for the Bears, but Helena High storms back and wins 21-14. West loses a close game again for the second straight week. All right, let's head down to Daylist Stadium. Billing Senior taking on the Glacier Wolfpack. They're fired up for the home opener, but Bronx are down a touchdown. And check this out, Cohen Castellitz just does the rest of that short pass from Presley. A man among boys finds pay dirt for the Wolfpack. Glacier in scoring territory again. Here's Presley to Cole Johnson. Good luck getting in front of that guy. Bowls his way into the end zone. 21-0. Cow Spell Glacier. Senior Faithful still fired up, but it's 28-0 now. Presley over the middle of the Castellitz, and this guy's got another gear. Beats the Bronx to the pylon to extend the Wolfpack lead. 35-0 now. Bronx do find the end zone. Six seconds before the end of the first half. Peyton Oakley rolling to his right. That's David Leifelt for the score. That was their only one of the game. Wolfpack, the bigger, faster, stronger team tonight as they wrangle the Bronx. 49-7, to the final. All right, here's some other scores from round double-A. Bozeman, Gallatin, they're for real. Good win for them. 28-13 to over Sentinel. Raptors start the year 2-0. Butte versus Bozeman, a classic rivalry matchup with a lot of history. The trophy stays with the Hawks, 39-15. to Great Falls bounces back to blow out Hellgate, 42-0. Flathead edges Belgrade in the close game, 17 to 14. CMR, meanwhile, handles Missoula Big Sky, 36-21. And you know, on Thursday, Skyview lost to Capital, 35 to 10. Moving our way to some more Class A action now. After escaping Glendive with a win last week, Billing Central was back at home in the Rocky Bowl to host the Havert Blue Ponies. Rams honoring their fallen teammate in an emotional entrance to the field. That's number 78, Colin Messer, who passed away. But here in the first quarter now, shifting back to the field, Haver quarterback here in Courtnage finds some space on the keeper. He takes that deep down the sideline. Blue Ponies hoping for a touchdown. It's not. And then as they're looking to punch it in, Xavier Brackenridge has other plans. Stuffing it so the Ponies have to settle for the field goal. Ty Goley's chip shot is good. It's 3-0 Haver. Second quarter now, Rams in the red zone. Play fake for Adam Bakkenbush. Braden Flores hauls it in for the 16-yard touchdown coming into your screen. 
That was the first of 24 consecutive Billing Central points. They go on to win 24 to 3. Class B action for Shepard and Huntley Project. The Red Devils facing Glasgow Mustangs welcome in three forks. And to break it all down, here's SWX's Caitlin McLean, who joins us with the highlights. Up first tonight, the Huntley Project Red Devils look to rebound from a loss last week at Manhattan in their home opener against the Glasgow Scotties. Project scores on their first drive of the game, and it's all defense until this punt gets away from the Red Devils. Ethan Engstrom knocks the ball loose, and the Scotties recover. And they waste no time punching it in. Kai Gamas takes it himself, and the Scotties do go for two and miss, so Project still leads by one. But not for long, blinking you miss it. A bomb from near midfield to Cade Sorley, and Project starts to pull away. Glasgow trying to regroup, but Project's defense is on the hunt. The ball deflects off of Cade Hudima. He doesn't know where it went, but Jake Cook does a pick six, and the Red Devils never look back. They win it 38-6. to six. Across the bridge in Shepherd, three forks out to a 26-6 lead at the half. The Wolves threatening to add another one, but Aiden Lammers, who also had a night on offense, comes up with the pick. Mustangs with opportunities and not a lot of luck. Three Forks with a goal line stand, and Shepard turns it over on downs. Three Forks does add one more with a few minutes left in the second half. Shane Williams gets the ball in his hands, weaves through a few defenders, and he's home free. The Wolves leave no doubt with a 32-6 win. From Shepard, Caitlin McLean, SWX. All right, thank you, Caitlin. And we'll stay in Class B. The Columbus Cougars started their season with a shutout win over Anaconda last week. Tonight, Cougars back at home against Colstrip. We pick up here in the second quarter. Columbus defense coming up big, looking for another shutout. And here, they're able to punch the ball out of the Colstrip hands. They recover it. And the offense takes advantage. How about this ball from Mason Meyer? Beautiful over the top to Austin Rager. After a couple good plays by Columbus's Lane DeSavour, runs in a big one for the touchdown. The Cougars' lead was 41 0 at the half, and Columbus ends up with a 59 0 win. Your final score there, they're 2 0. Let's go down I 90 to Park City. The Panthers hosting Ekalaka in some eight man football action. Second quarter after a muffed punt here. From Ikalaka, Park City is able to gain control of the ball. Park City's Antigan Hain with a read option, flicks it out to Wyatt Story. That guy's got some jets. He scores the touchdown for the Panthers. Bulldogs come right back. This one was back and forth the whole way. That's Chase loading for the Bulldogs. Keeps the quarterback keeper for a touchdown. And a little bit later, Aaron Snap from Park City backed up to their own end zone. That's trouble. That's a safety. So the second quarter now, we're tied at 22 apiece. And uh, Bulldogs just doing their thing. Another quarterback keeper for six. Ikalaka ends up on top in this one, 54 to 42. Let's check out some other area scores. Lockwood at Sydney. Lions are 2 0 as they beat Sydney 13 to 6. This is the game we were talking about at the top of the show. Glendive and Miles City made history tonight. According to my main man, Zach Austin, the last time the Red Devils beat their rivals from Miles City was 1996. Yeah, that was the year I was born. Tonight, a 26-game winning streak is snapped as the Red Devils win 26-12. to Joliet and Thompson Falls. How about the Jayhawks moving up to Class B? Win on a goal line stand. They're 2-0. Roundup versus Big Timber. Herders take it 26-8. to Those are some of the scores from the area. Still to come on SWX Overtime, it's time to talk some college football as Montana and Montana State kick off their 2023 seasons on Saturday. Montana has Butler. Montana State faces Utah Tech. We break down both of those opponents for you when we return right here on SWX Overtime. Thank you for staying with us. Rocky Mountain College is headed to the High Line this weekend as they take on MSU Northern in a non-conference matchup with the Lights. Northern got their first win since 2021 in their home opener under second-year head coach Jerome Sowers. And the Battle and Bears know they have to be prepared for a much better Northern Lights team on Saturday. Yeah, their Coach Sowers and his staff are doing a tremendous job. Uh, we just got done watching a lot of film and seeing 
you know, from a defensive standpoint, 11 guys run around. Um, offensively, they're they're gonna they're getting better up front. They're better in the backfield. They're skilled at receiver. So, uh, and their defense had a shutout last week and a touchdown. So they're gonna be very confident, which they should be. Um, good opponent, uh, and we've got to have two really good days of practice, um, a great walkthrough, and have a great trip up there. It's always a tough place to play. No, they're a good team. They're rebuilding, and they just came off a win. Uh, they have good players everywhere, and it's a new Northern team for sure. So we got we can't take it lightly we got to get in it go in there and play to our standard and play to our capabilities and we should be all right kind of interesting game for the battling bears well we're now a little over 24 hours away from kickoff as montana and montana state prepare to open their 2023 seasons the grizz will open against butler and swx's zach kaplan give us a preview of saturday's season opener <laughs> My favorite thing on game day, besides the actual game, just running out of that tunnel, the smoke and the clears, you see 25,000 fans just going freaking nuts. It's been 277 days since the Grizz have ran onto the field at Washington Grizzly Stadium, and finally, the wait is just about over. This is uh, this is the real deal. The games are uh, what we're here for, so I'm uh, really excited to run out in front of Wad Grizz and hear all those fans. With all the excitement in the air, a sense of unease still looms over the coming season for both fans and Grizz head coach Bobby Houck. Yeah, coach player alike. I think uh, the first game's a little nerve-wracking because you're, you're not totally sure about what you've got and you're really unsure of what the opponent has. Many Grizz fans thought 2022 would be the year of a breakthrough with a team picked to win the Big Sky preseason, but injuries and some missing pieces derailed the once promising campaign. But Halk will start anew in 2023. Perhaps those pieces are new coordinators in Brent Pease and Ronnie Bradford. Despite not naming an official starter, it'll be a duo at quarterback with Sam Vidlack and Clifton McDowell entering the fold. Clifton wasn't here in the spring, so he picked it up pretty fast uh, in terms of just it's speaking a different language. I thought Sam continued to refine uh, his knowledge of the system, and, you know, I just... I thought they handled things. As for their opponent, Butler finished last season 7-4. and four. They had a shot at making the FCS playoffs before season-ending back-to-back losses killed those dreams. Still, the Grizz, wary of quarterback Brett Bushka, the pioneer football league's offensive player of the year a season ago. This guy can beat you with his feet, and he can beat you with his arm. He's very accurate. It's the start of a new season for Montana. Fans will finally get answers to some of the big off-season questions when they kick off Saturday at noon on SWX. All right, thank you, Zach. And Montana State is on the brink of their annual Gold Rush game against Utah Tech. SWX's awesome par is in Bozeman to give us a preview of the Trailblazers as they travel to take on the Cats. The countdown is on to Bobcat Stadium being lit up in a sea of gold. The countless hours in the classroom, weight room, and on the practice field all lead to one thing for Montana State football, and it's game day. The Bobcats come in with some question marks in the secondary with Ty Okada and James Campbell now departed. A plethora of Bobcats will fill that void. But I suspect that we're going to you know, play probably five corners, um, which is a good thing. We've We've sometimes played three most times played two from week to week so to have the thought that you can play five so the two deep plus Devin Davis um, that's exciting the Bobcats are coming off a Big Sky Conference title last season paired with an FCS semi-final appearance a successful season for most but these Bobcats simply wanted more after giving up 280 yards on the ground to South Dakota State the defensive line group has used that loss as motivation we remember that every day in the weight room. We always talk about it in meetings to not let that happen again. So we're getting after it. We put the weight on. We put on some muscle. We put weight on. So we're trying to get bigger, faster, stronger so we don't let that happen again. The Week 2 matchup with South Dakota State will be a doozy. But before they get there, these Bobcats are focused on Utah Tech, a team that is replacing a 1,000-yard receiver, rusher, and quarterback from last year. But that doesn't mean they won't be just as talented. Uh, they, were very, they were very prolific at times on offense. Now, not all those guys are back, but you, you got to assume that they can plug some guys in to do some of the same things. You know, we really, you know, we have to play well in this game right from the jump to, to be able to do the things we want. Get excited. Gold Rush is just one sleep away, Bobcat fans. College football is back in Bozeman. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 p.m. from Bobcat Stadium. In Bozeman, Austin Parr for SWX. 
All right, thank you, Austin. And let's wrap things up tonight with another look at some of those area scores in Class A. Lockwood Lions looking to turn a corner this season. They're 2-0 and after getting the win in Sydney. And that win for the Glendive Red Devils. Dawson County over Miles City, their first time beating their rivals, the Cowboys, in 26 consecutive games since 1996. That winning streak for the Cowboys over their rivals, the Red Devils, snapped tonight as Glendive wins 26 to 12. Shout out to Joliet going to 2 and 0 with a win tonight. And Big Timber took care of Roundup. That does it for tonight's episode of SWX Overtime. Another shout out to the Fergus Faithful for sending us some highlights tonight. Please send us your scores, your highlights, so we can get you uh, covered with all the best Montana has to offer.